This is the Avaya Podcast Network. APN. Technology, news, and information. All in one place. This is Ian One Talk Podcast, episode 106. Recorded Friday, September 21st, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. While getting ready to record this week's podcast, I received an email from a user who was having problems interfacing with his carrier regarding PS Alley service and was starting to question if his information was incorrect or had he reached a customer service representative that was talking about a subject they really knew nothing about. Now, since I do run into this from time to time throughout the year, I thought it would be a great opportunity to provide a rundown on PS Alley for my listeners and readers. But before we dive into the complexities of Annie and Alley, let's put some definitions around what we're talking about. By definition, Annie, or Automatic Number Identification, is the telephone number associated with the access line from which the call originates. It's used by the PSAP to retrieve the Alley record of the caller. Now, Alley, or Automatic Location Information, is the automatic display to the PSAP of the caller's telephone number, the address or location of the telephone, and supplementary emergency services information of the location of which the call originates. Now, Private Switch Alley, also known as PS Alley, is a service option that provides enhanced 911 features for telephone stations specifically behind private switches or PBXs. So I own a PBX, but do I need PS Alley? Well, this is where the confusion really comes into play. Let's assume that, legally, every real telephone number is entitled to its own Annie and Alley record. Annie and Alley records are managed by the dial tone providers, such as the Lex, and changes and updates are provided to the database management service provider through service order input transactions, or SOI transactions. These are just a file of completed service order updates that are sent to the database management service provider by all service providers. Now, as you would expect, Nina has defined the standard formats and protocols for Alley Data Exchange, Alley Response, and GIS Mapping, and makes all of that information available in the Nina 02-010 document. Referring to this document, the Nina 1.0 data format structure has the record at 240 characters in length. And in that record, positions 108 through 127 provide 20 free-form alphanumeric characters that can describe location. Under the NINA 2.1 data format, the record is 512 bytes, and that field allows for 60 characters in positions 128 through 187. This is not PS Alley. These are just regular Alley records. So this example is your primary argument to your LEC that you are only asking them to perform a service that they're mandated to provide using the standard mechanisms that are already in place. Now, what they're going to be trying to sell you at this point is their service, which allows you to manage your records in the database. This is the service that's commonly referred to as PS Alley but is often marketed under localized service names such as Pinpoint or 911 Connect and various others. Now these services, as well as their monthly recurring fees, provide customers with the GUI that enables them to manage their entries and even update the location field in the records. But we're not asking to do that. We're just asking for the record to be created. So the problem is when you use zone-based ELIN EARL pairs, that basically don't change, once the record is created, it never has to be updated, unless you further decide to subdivide a particular section of your building or add additional ones. Now, if the LEC wants to charge you a fee every time you do go in and manage it, I think they have every right to do that. But why should there be a monthly recurring fee for a record that you're not gonna change? The line I like to use on the customer service rep is, I'm already paying you a monthly fee for 911 services on my phone bill. But if I don't want to manage my numbers and the information is going to remain static, why again do you need to bill me more money? I then like to remind them that the telephone number they provide me at my home address also has specific address information on it. And yet I don't have to maintain PS Alley service for that. 
At some point in time, you'll get escalated to a supervisor, and at that point, you use the exact same logic on them until they either agree to provide you with the access to make a one-time update to existing records, or they escalate you further up the chain. At some point, you're bound to either reach someone that knows what they're talking about and can fix the problem for you, or you're going to get someone that just makes the change. So in the end, your argument points are this. Number one, you're already paying monthly service charges for E911 on all of your numbers. Number two, you're asking for the ability to make sure that the information associated with each of those numbers is correct. Number three, you're not asking them for a system to manage those numbers on a daily basis. And finally, if they refuse to correct the information, ask them to provide you with a liability waiver that states that they acknowledge your concern about location granularity and the fact that their database is not correct and that they are refusing to assist you in fixing the problem. That last one usually gets you a long way. Whatever you do, document everyone that you speak with and keep a journal entry, including any research that you do on the internet, including this blog. If you can't convince your local carrier to play nice in the sandbox, at least you'll have a nice discovery file to hand to your lawyer. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911, the line is recorded. What is the exact location of your emergency? This is the Avaya Podcast Network. APN.